Chapters 1 through 6 of the Book of Joshua from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Ferrar Fenton. The Book of Joshua, Chapters 1 through 6. Chapter 1. It was after the death of Moses, the servant of the ever-living, that the ever-living spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, the lieutenant of Moses, saying, My servant Moses has died, therefore you arise, cross the Jordan, you and all the people, to the country I will give to them. To the children of Israel I give all the extent that you can march over, as I said to Moses, from the desert to Lebanon, and from the great river Phraith, all the country of the Kittites, to the great sea, at the setting of the sun, shall be your boundaries. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will never leave nor desert you. Be strong and bold, for you shall divide that country among this people, as I promised to their fathers to give it to them." Therefore be very strong and bold. Keep and practice all the laws that I commanded to my servant Moses. Turn not from them to the right hand or the left, but act prudently wherever you go. You must not remove the book of these laws from before you, but think about it day and night, for you must carefully practice all written in it, for then your career will prosper. So reflect upon it. Have I not commanded you to be strong and bold? Be not afraid or shrink, for your ever-living God is with you wherever you go. Joshua consequently ordered the officers of the people, saying, Go through the midst of the camp and command the people thus. Prepare yourselves to march, for at three days from now you must pass over the Jordan to go to possess the country that your ever-living God has given you to hold. But to the Reubenites and to the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua issued this order. Remember the command that Moses, the servant of the ever-living, gave to you, saying, Your ever-living God measured out and gave you this country. Your wives and children and flocks shall remain in the country which Moses gave to you on this side Jordan. But you must pass over armed before your brothers, with all the strength of your army, and help them, until the ever-living has measured out to your brothers, as he has to you, and they also are put into possession of the country which your ever-living God has given to them. Then you may return to the country you possess, and hold that which Moses the servant of the ever-living gave to you on the side of the Jordan toward the sun rising. And they replied to Joshua, We will do all that you order us, and wherever you send us we will go. Exactly as we listen to Moses we will listen to you, because your ever-living God is with you as he was with Moses, Every man who rebels against you and will not obey your commands in whatever you order shall die. Therefore, be strong and bold. Chapter 2 Joshua then sent two men from his officers with secret instructions, saying, Go examine the country of Jericho. So they went and arrived at the house of a woman named Rahab, an innkeeper, and lodged there. But it was reported to the king of Jericho that, Men have arrived from the sons of Israel tonight to explore the country. The king of Jericho consequently sent to Rahab to say, Bring to me the men who have come to your house, for they have come to examine the country. But the woman took the two men and hid them, and replied, Some men certainly came to me, but I do not know where they came from. However, when the gates were shut at dark, the men went away, and I myself do not know where the men went. Go after them quickly so as to catch them. She had, however, taken them up to the roof and covered them over with cotton she had stored there upon the roof. The messengers accordingly pursued after them towards the Jordan, to the fords, and the gates were shut after them as soon as they went out in pursuit. But they were in hiding. She then went up to the roof to them and said to the men, I know that the ever-living will give this country to you, because a terror has fallen upon us, and all the population of the land will melt away before you, for we have heard how the ever-living caused the waters of the Red Sea to dry up when you came out from the Mitzrayim, and what you have done to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon and to Og, how you gave them to destruction. 
we have heard these things, and our hearts melt, and the spirit of a man will never rise against you, for your ever-living God is God in heaven above and on the earth beneath. Therefore now listen, I pray, to me. When the ever-living shows favor to you, you also show favor to my father's family, and give me a pledge of your truth that you will preserve the lives of my father and mother, and my brothers and sisters, and all belonging to them from death. The men therefore said to her, May our lives sink in death if we do not keep this promise, if when the ever-living gives us the country we do not act fair and true to you. She then let them down by a rope from the window, for her house was on the wall of the fortifications, and she lived on the wall. Then she said to them, Go to the hills, for fear your pursuers should meet you, and conceal yourselves for three days until the pursuers return, and after that go your own way. The men also replied to her, We will stand by the oath we have sworn to you. When we arrive at this country, tie this scarlet cord to your window which we are going through, and collect your father and mother and brothers and all your father's family with you into the house, and it shall be that all who come outside the doors of your house, his blood shall be upon his own head, for all who are in your house, their blood be upon our heads if a hand touches them. And if you attend to this instruction, we will stand by the oath we have sworn. She accordingly answered, it shall be as you say. So she dismissed them, and they went, and she tied the scarlet cord to the window. So they proceeded and arrived at the hills, and stayed there three days until the return of the pursuers, who sought them in all the roads, but found them not. Then the two men descended from the hills, and crossed the fords, and came to Joshua the son of Nun, and reported to him all these events, and said to Joshua, the ever-living will give all the country to our hands, and will also dissolve the whole of the population of the land before us. Chapter 3 Joshua accordingly arose in the morning, and marched from the Acacia woods, and advanced to the Jordan, and all the sons of Israel with him, and halted near the fords. And there, three days afterwards, the officers mustered the camp at daybreak, and ordered the people, when you see the ark of the covenant of your ever-living God and the priests and Levites carrying it, march from your stations and follow it. However, the ever-living interposes between you and it two thousand cubits space. Approach not to it, except so that you may know the way that it goes, for you will not proceed by the way you did yesterday. Joshua also commanded the people to sanctify themselves, for on the next day the ever-living would do wonders among them. Then Joshua commanded the priests, Take the Ark of the Covenant and proceed, and march before the people carrying the Ark of the Covenant. The ever-living also said to Joshua, I will begin to make you great today in the eyes of all Israel, who shall learn that as I was with Moses, so I am with you. So now command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant, and say, When you come to the middle of the stream of the Jordan, stand still in the torrent. Joshua consequently said to the sons of Israel, Now approach and hear the commands of your ever-living God. Then Joshua added, By these you will learn that a living God is amongst you, and that he will drive the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Hivites, and the Perizzites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites from before you. Look, the ark of the covenant of the prince of the whole earth passes before you to the Jordan. So now select for yourselves twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one man from each. And when the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Ever-Living, the prince of the whole earth, touch the stream of the Jordan, the waters will cease coming down from above. Then the people shall march from their camps and pass over the Jordan with the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people." So when the bearers of the ark arrived at the Jordan, and the feet of the priests who bore the ark were splashing in the middle of the waters of the Jordan, and the Jordan is full over all its banks during the time of harvest, the waters descending from above stood still. Below they also stood for a distance from Adam to the wood which is near Zarthon. But the water flowed down from off the ford at the king's stream completely, and the people crossed over towards Jericho. And the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Ever-Living stood firmly on dry land in the middle of the torrent, and all Israel passed over on dry land until all the forces had passed the Jordan. 
Chapter 4 But when all the forces had finished passing the Jordan, then the ever-living said to Joshua, Select for yourself from the people twelve men, a man from each tribe, and order them to take from the bed of the Jordan, from where the feet of the priests stand, twelve stones, and carry them over with you, and place them at the lodgment where you will lodge to-night. Joshua consequently summoned twelve men, men whom he appointed from the sons of Israel, a man from every tribe. And Joshua said to them, Pass after the ark of your ever-living God to the middle of the Jordan, and let each man lift a stone upon his shoulder, as a record to the tribes of the sons of Israel, so that there may be an evidence in the midst of you when your children shall ask you in the future, What are these stones to us? That you can say, The waters of the Jordan were divided before the ark of the covenant of the ever-living. When it passed into the torrent, the waters of the Jordan were divided, and these stones are as a memorial to the children of Israel forever. The children of Israel, therefore, did as Joshua commanded, and carried twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, as the ever-living commanded to Joshua, to the number of the tribes of the sons of Israel, and they carried them to the lodgment and fixed them there. And Joshua set up the twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, where the feet of the priests had stood who carried the Ark of the Covenant. But the priests who carried the Ark stood still in the middle of the Jordan, until the accomplishment of all the things that the ever-living commanded Joshua to instruct the people to do, exactly as Moses had commanded Joshua. Then the forces hastened and passed over. When, however, the whole of the forces had finished crossing, then the ark of the ever-living and the priests passed in the presence of the forces. But the heroes of the sons of Reuben, and the sons of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, preceded the children of Israel as God had commanded Moses. Their army of forty thousand armed men passed before the ever-living to the war by the fords of Jericho. On that day the ever-living made Joshua great in the eyes of all Israel, and they feared him as they had feared Moses all his life. Then the ever-living spoke to Joshua, saying, Order the priests who carried the ark into the ford to come up from the Jordan. So Joshua ordered the priests, Come up from the Jordan. And when the priests who carried the ark of the covenant of the ever-living ascended from the middle of the Jordan, when the soles of the feet of the priests touched the dry land, then the waters of the torrent returned from above and went as formerly over all its banks. Thus the forces ascended from the Jordan on the tenth of the first month, and encamped in Gilgal to the east of Jericho. And the twelve stones that were taken from the Jordan Joshua erected in Gilgal and spoke to the sons of Israel, saying, When your children ask you hereafter, inquiring, What are these stones? You shall inform your children that they are a memorial that the Jordan was dried up at the passage of the sons of Israel, when our ever-living God caused the water of the torrent to dry before us until we crossed, as our ever-living God did to the Red Sea, which he caused to dry up before us until we had crossed over, so that all the peoples of the country might learn how strong the hand of the Lord is, so that they might fear our ever-living God at all times. Chapter 5 but when all the kings of the Amorites who are beyond the Jordan towards the west, and all the kings of the Canaanites who were along the sea, heard how the ever-living had caused the waters of the Jordan to dry before the children of Israel until they had passed over, their hearts melted, and there was no spirit left in them before the children of Israel. At this time the ever-living said to Joshua, Make for yourself stone knives, and remove the foreskin of the children of Israel again. So Joshua prepared stone knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of circumcision. And this event was Joshua's circumcision. All the full-grown who came out from among the Mitzrayim, the men of military age, died in the desert on the journey coming from Mitzrayim, for all the people who came out were circumcised, but all the people who were born in the desert during the journey from Mitzrayim were not circumcised. For the children of Israel traveled for forty years in the desert, until all the generation of men of military age who came out of Mitzrayim had died, because they would not listen to the voice of the ever-living. So the ever-living swore to them that they should not see the country which he had promised to Abraham to give to us, a land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore Joshua circumcised the children that had grown up after them, for they were foreskinned, because they had not been circumcised during the journey. 
But whilst they were completing the circumcision of all the nation, they kept quiet in the camp until they were restored. Then the ever-living said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Mitzrayim from off you. Therefore the name of that place is called Gilgal to this day. The children of Israel afterwards camped in Gilgal and sacrificed the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month after passing the fords of Jericho, and they ate cakes from the corn of the land the day after the Passover, and baked oats the same day. And the manna ceased from the morning they ate of the corn of the land, and the children of Israel never again had manna, but they ate the produce of the land of Canaan from that year. While Joshua was resting near Jericho, he raised his eyes and saw a man stand near him with a drawn sword in his hand. So Joshua went to him and asked, Are you our enemy or no? When he replied, No, for I am the chief of the army of the ever-living who have come to you. Then Joshua bowed his face to the earth and paid him reverence, and said, What would my master say to his servant? And the chief of the ever-living's army replied to Joshua, Put your shoes from off your feet, for the place you stand upon is holy. And Joshua did so. Chapter 6 But Jericho shut itself up, and it was shut up before the children of Israel. None came out, and none went in. Then the ever-living said to Joshua, I have given Jericho to your hand with the royal commanders of its power. Therefore let all the troops march round the walls of the city in a circle. Do this for six days. But on the seventh let the priests take the seven trumpets of the jubilee from before the ark. And on the seventh encirclement of the city, after the seventh time, the priests shall sound with the trumpets, and at the crash of the horns of jubilee, at the sound of the voice of the trumpets, all the forces shall shout with a great shout when the walls of the city will fall down and the people shall go up, each ahead of himself. Joshua the son of Nun consequently summoned the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and let seven priests carry the seven jubilee trumpets before the Ark of the Ever-Living. And he himself commanded the forces, March and surround the city. He then passed before the Ark of the Ever-Living, and Joshua said to the people and the seven priests who carried the seven jubilee trumpets before the Ever-Living, March on and blow the trumpets, and the Ark of the Covenant of the Ever-Living shall follow you. So part marched before the priests who blew the trumpets, and the others marched after the Ark, marching and blowing the trumpets. But Joshua commanded the force, do not shout, and let not your voice be heard, and let no word come from your mouth until the day when I tell you to shout, then shout out. Thus the Ark of the Ever-Living marched round the city with measured step once. Then they returned to the camp and rested in the camp. When Joshua arose next morning, the priests took up the Ark of the Ever-Living, and seven priests took the seven jubilee trumpets from before the Ark. Marching, they marched and sounded the trumpets, and the vanguard marched before them, and the rear marched after the Ark of the Ever-Living, marching and blowing trumpets, and circuited the city the second day once, and returned to the camp. They did the same for six days. But when the seventh day arrived, at the departure of darkness, they circled the city as instructed seven times. Yes, they circled the city seven times, and at the seventh time the priests sounded the trumpets, and Joshua said to the people, Cheer! For the ever-living has given you the city, and the city shall be devoted, it and all that is in it, to the ever-living, except Rahab the innkeeper. She shall live, she and all who are in her house, for she concealed the messengers whom we sent. But except them, keep yourselves from the devoted things, lest you should be tempted to take some from the devoted, and put it in the camp of Israel, and bring destruction and trouble to it. For all silver and gold and brass and iron are sacred to the ever-living. It must come to the treasury of the ever-living. Then the people cheered, and the trumpets sounded. And when the people heard the sound of the trumpets, then the people cheered with a loud cheering. Then the walls fell down, and the men went into the city, each before himself, and captured the town, and destroyed all who were in the city, both men and women, from the young to the old, and even cattle and sheep and asses by the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said to the two men who spied the country, 
Go to the house of the innkeeping woman, and bring that woman from here, and all who are with her, as you promised to her. Consequently the young spies went and brought out Rahab, and her father and mother, and brothers, and all who were with her. However, the silver and gold, and furniture of brass and iron, they gave to the treasury of the house of the ever-living. But Joshua granted life to Rahab the innkeeper, and the family of her father, and all belonging to her, and they are resident in the heart of Israel to this day, because she concealed the messengers whom Joshua had sent to spy Jericho. At the same time Joshua swore, saying, Let the man be accursed before the ever-living who raises and builds this city of Jericho. Let him lay the foundation on his firstborn, and set up the gates on his youngest. The End of Chapters 1-6 through 6 of the Book of Joshua Recording by Mark Penfold